Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Domus tripped young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, And if uh -huh. your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh -huh. they got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the archive even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son Real fans, real talk dot com. I'm out one Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com What's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk Hope everybody enjoyed their Thanksgiving I know I sure did Big macaroni and cheese Candy yams, had the collard greens, cornbread you know all that, all the all the stuff in and everything. You know, so I that's I don't want to you know keep indulging like that. So, but you know it was good. Hope everybody enjoyed their Thanksgiving. <laughs> but uh, we got a whole lot of sports to get into, and we got a very special guest that's going to be joining us a little bit later on the program. But before we do get into all of that, let me introduce my co-host, the one and only Mark the Statman Scavenge. What's going on, man? Well, you're making me hungry with all the Thanksgiving dishes, that's for sure. I made sure. myself hungry. <laughs> it's, it's good to be back for another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, always good to be here, but as far as the world of sports is concerned, I am very, very disappointed, upset, and just pretty much fed up at this point with the New York Giants. And uh, that, that's why, that, man, I made sure that Ammo was here this week. To get the ball back going. No, I mean, I definitely need it. No, yeah, no. I think we, as, as Giants fans, we're gonna, we might finish that bottle today. And I'm just letting you know, not even before the show's over, just before this, this uh, topic is over, we might finish that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Shout out to Soundview Liquors, man. They they, they they making sure the bar stays stock. They knew myself and the stat man was going to need it this week. We needed a fresh batch, so they sent something over for us special for today, man. But go ahead, stat man. You, you lead it off, man. I, I just couldn't even find the Eli Manning jersey. I wanted to pay tribute. but That's it's how you know like, it's bad. You know it's bad because, <laughs> I mean, it's just I, I, I really can't believe. It doesn't make any sense to, to bench Eli Manning at this point. Like, it does to a certain extent that hey, you know, um, he you don't want to risk him getting injured, and the season means nothing. But at the same time, Eli Manning he he made it clear what the streak meant to him. Ben McAdoo sa said that you know he, Eli Manning could start like the first half and then bring the new guys in so they could get some playing time. Yeah. But Eli Manning, the classy person that he is. He doesn't want to tarnish the record. If he gets the record, he doesn't want it to be that, you know, he started the first quarter or the first half, and then he, and plus he doesn't get a chance to win the game for his team. So it just doesn't mean as much. And you can see Eli Manning holding in tears in the interview, and it's just, it's really just disgraceful. Uh, out of New York history, I can't think of any New York team that has done a player as wrong as they did Eli Manning. Two Super Bowl championships, two Super Bowl MVPs. He's literally the only thing that the Giants have good on that team. He's got no offensive line. He's got no running backs. He's got no receivers. And he still doesn't play bad. His receivers are dropping. He doesn't have time. He has to throw it away. He's not causing a lot of turnovers despite not having time to throw. I mean, he's doing great considering the circumstances. The fantasy numbers might not be there because... You know, he's, he just, he can't, he's got no one to throw to. He's got, you know, he doesn't have a running back. Everything is quick passes because he doesn't have time. And every now and then some of them, his, his fifth string wide receivers, you know, who are now first string uh, or first and second string are, uh, are occasionally catch a pass. And it just, it makes absolutely no sense that you would disrespect Eli Manning the way that they did. You honor what he wanted. If he didn't want to play, 
Uh, of course, he's going to want to play, and I, I see from an injury standpoint, but if he says, no, I want to play the whole game, this record means a lot to me, and you go and screw him over and take that away from him, it's just it's disgusting. I can't think of, like, when Patrick Ewing, you know, kind of got the boot and wasn't re-signed, you know, I, I was a little upset because of what he did for the Knicks, and it wasn't his fault. He had some injuries, and he still played good games in the games that he was playing. And, you know, the, the media always goes after, always went after Patrick Ewing. The missed layup, he should have dunked it, when meanwhile it was impossible to dunk it, and he got the game-winning shot before. And even, you know... With Eli Manning. Now, you know, every single year, oh, Eli Manning is the problem. Like, you know, these these uh, other guys in the media, oh, Eli Manning, oh, he says he's a lead. Everyone laughs at him. Then he wins his second Super Bowl. You know, he had 25. And I, I've, I've been the biggest defender of Eli Manning since, since he came to the league. Phil Simms was my favorite quarterback for the New York Giants. As You know, he's who I watched as a kid. And to have... You know, as an adult, to have your childhood quarterback be more favored, you know, I'm sorry, as an adult, be more favored than your child quarterback, that's amazing. Eli Manning, he's, he's, one, of my, he's one of my favorite players in any sport of all time, and, you know, he's being, he's being screwed royally right now. Well, here's the thing. All right, and I, I know what you what you're saying about the injuries, but it's not even about the injuries because they're looking long term anyway. I mean, Eli's. I mean, he's not going to be playing five more years. We already, we already. But know he could that. be playing three more. Now, he could be playing two. He more. could be playing three. He could be playing two more years. But but let's go back to to the quarterbacks that that you got that you want to quote unquote. It's Geno see how Smith. Naked. I, I, I'm, I'm getting. I know there. you're getting okay, to it. I'm but. getting there. So we are talking about Geno Smith, number one who we know is horrible from his days in the same stadium, mm -hmm. in the same locker room, playing for the Jets. We know he's horrible. All right. Then you got David Webb, third-round draft pick. You know, maybe you might want to try him out and, and see what he can what he can do. But, at the, you know, how can you really get a, a fair assessment of either one of these two guys if that's what you actually wanted when there's no receivers, like you said, there's no running backs, like yeah. you said. There's no offensive line, like you said. And the defense is playing horrible. We just, they just lost uh, Jabbar Jenkins for the season. He's done now. So how can you can you say that we, you know, we want to see what the young guys can do, but there's nothing there for the young guys to yeah. actually like, – I mean, they're, like, they're, they're pretty much playing with fourth and fifth string receivers. So what exactly can they show you? Now, I mean – Hey, listen. It, it maybe because I'm 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 going to cancel out Gino. I'm just going to cancel him. Yeah. He's out of there. I'm not he's even starting for some reason. Yeah, he, he's starting. I'm not even going because we know Gino's horrible. David Webb. Maybe he maybe he comes in and he throws for for five four hundred yard games and three touchdowns. Maybe because we haven't seen him actually. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying he can. I'm just I'm just. I don't oh, think Tom oh, Brady oh, could just, come in there and do that exactly, with the Giants the way exactly. they are right now. But I'm, you know, I'm just saying you know on the on the small women of prayer miracle chance baby right because we haven't actually seen him play in an in an NFL game. So let's just say he does it. Okay, all right. But we know Geno Smith is horrible. So this is there's no excuse, no reasoning behind you. You're gonna take Eli out. And to for Geno Smith, we already know that that that's that's out of there. But again, they have nothing. So how can you actually get a fair assessment of these two quarterbacks with nothing? Okay, because first of all, the guys that that, that they're going to be throwing to, you probably won't even see them on the field once Odell is back, once Shepard is back. You're probably not even going to see these guys. Uh, you know the running backs. I mean, they they're not they're not going to last. They they're horrible too. Darko he. You know, maybe he's played a little bit decent, but they have nothing. They have no offensive line. Now, if you if Eli can't can't make it happen behind that offensive line, and, and he's actually been playing decent football the past couple of weeks. I don't think he's thrown an interception. He in, threw in, one in garbage time, like you know, uh, the last game. Yeah, but as far as but I mean, uh, you know, against again, the Redskins. Yeah, you know, but Eli is actually playing decent football. To 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 have no no offensive line. Everybody at the beginning of the season, oh, Flowers got his act together. He's been reading the playbook. He's going to be this. He's going to be that. Horrible. The rest of the offensive line, horrible. Running backs, horrible. Wide receivers, great. 
but they got hurt. Everybody's banged up. Odell. Yeah, we were a Super Bowl contending team, but we have into the season. We had the the third highest injuries in the entire league. I it's, think it, it started. It started with the cheap shot on Odell in the play in the in the preseason, and that's when everything went down. When when he got cheap shotted and he had a little little tweak on his on his ankle, he came back. He tried to play. And it just it just wasn't gonna happen. It was, it was worse than what we thought it was. Then Brandon Marshall goes down, and one by one by one, everybody starts dropping like flies. How there's no quarterback in the league that's gonna gonna get you ten game ten wins in the season. Our fifth string is our first string. Yes, yeah. there's no Tom Brady couldn't do it. Aaron Rodgers is not doing it with that team. Like you know, so there's nobody that you're gonna put into into place, and that was gonna do something different than what Eli did. It's just he has nothing at all to work with, you know. In previous years, last season, yeah, they they won 11 games last season. The defense was playing great last season, you know. Guys, forget defense is horrible this year. And then we keep we we we, we lost guys starters to start the season off, and then. Again, little by little as the season continues, we kept losing more guys, more guys, and more guys. So, you know, it's, it's just disrespectful to Eli Manning as a as a franchise quarterback, two-time Super Bowl champion, like you said, two-time Super Bowl MVP, to to be benched like this, and you want to bring in Geno Smith. And you're talking about off. him possibly beating one of the toughest records to to beat, and that's yeah. Brett Favre's consecutive game streak. That's like a, a Cal Ripken, Iron Man type yeah. of thing. And you're not going to see that happen because you don't see quarterbacks that don't miss games. The su suspensions, injuries, whatever the case may be, you know, the quarterbacks all miss games. Yeah. There, no one is even close to Eli Manning in that aspect. And he has a legitimate chance to break Brett Favre's record. And you know what? When you look at Eli Manning, he does not look like a tough guy. Yeah. And I'm sure that's probably why that record means... And I know something about people looking at me and thinking I'm not tough at all or whatever. Like, you know, because they don't... Or I can't play sports or whatever because they look at me and they judge. So I know a little something about that. I'm sure Eli has been dealing with that a lot in his life because you look at Eli, you yeah. definitely do not think that he's a tough, you know... Iron Man type of player. Yeah. And he was, he's been getting beaten down, and he's learned over the years to, you know, to limit the fumbles. You know, that's the thing about a veteran quarterback. You don't make those mistakes. You know, he'll fall down with the slight hit rather than try to force the throw and fumble the ball. Like, he'll, he'll learn to not take as much abuse as he used to in his younger years and turn the ball over less, yeah. less interceptions, less fumbles. Because he's learned that through his mistakes, and you know that that's one of the advantages know, of some what, of these veteran what, quarterbacks. What like, do, does uh, McAdoo think is going to happen when he puts these two gentlemen, these two young quarterbacks, behind the Giants' offensive line? And there's he, no he has the nerve to say he has a game so plan well for Geno Smith. Listen. Like Mac Geno Smith <laughs> is going to come in there and beat the Raiders on Sunday. Yeah. Like he, 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 Geno Smith is, is McAdoo's savior. Listen, it, it's time for McAdoo. To, I mean, it's been time for McAdoo to go. I, I, I've been tired of him. Like he, he, I mean, all season calling guys out and just you know with the nonsense to call Eli out even earlier. And this is like, yeah. like it's his fault for things. Like, come on now. Yeah. So I, I'm, I, I'm not with it. I, I hope the Giants fire McAdoo. They should have fired See, him as soon as he came up with this. That's, kind of that's why you know I was going to write Eli. the blog on the real fans, real talk. You know, homepage. You know, uh, it was going to be called Man Down, Fan Down, <laughs> because I'm seriously done with the Giants if Eli Manning doesn't start this Sunday. Yeah. I'm not watching the rest of the season. I'm probably not watching, again, I'm really that I'm really that fed up with the Giants. Like, yeah. I mean, I host a sports show, so I guess I'm going to be watching every now and then, but I'm not going to be a diehard fan like I used to be. This is really... Some messed up. I'm, I'm very disappointed in my organization. If Eli Manning does play for the Broncos, like rumored, I might actually switch to being a Broncos fan to root for him. That's how mad I am at the Giants organization. But instead of writing that blog and making that statement, I was kind of hoping that the Mara family and, and ownership just came down and said, you know what, McAdoo, how about you take a hike? And we're going to stick with Eli Manning and let Eli Manning do whatever the hell he wants to do. Listen, I can, I can understand if you had a Deshaun Watson 
<coughs> behind Eli Manning. You know what I mean? I'd be like, yeah. all right. Or if it was like, you know, a situation in Green Bay where you had Aaron Rodgers sitting behind Brett Favre. We talking about Geno Smith here. Geno Smith, who is horrible. He did not do anything. He's got multiple for the chances. Jets. I mean, I'm thinking that maybe he's doing really well in practice and he's nobody's not, seeing it or he's something. He's not doing really well in practice. Stop. <laughs> Stop, that man. But this Stop. Is, even if Stop. he was, Stop. even if he was, there's no justification Stop. to disrespect Stop. Eli Manning it's like that. Geno Smith. E- even if the, the highlight of Geno Smith's career is getting his jaw broke. Okay, that yeah. that was that's the highlight of his career. Okay, and he and he had full seasons let's, with the Jets. Let's say hypothetically <laughs> he had the eye of the tiger and he's looking like Joe Montana in practice. That is still <laughs> not a reason to disrespect your the g- greatest quarterback in franchise history yeah. and Eli Manning. Yeah, it's it's not. It's not. It's, you know, at at least you 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 give Eli, I don't care if you trade him at the end of the season. But you give Eli his due, and you let him finish out this season. You, like you don't, you really gonna mess up this streak. For the, the team is horrible. It's yeah. not like the team is good and he's playing bad. The team is horrible and he's playing decent. You give Eli a good team, he can win you a Super Bowl. You give him a horrible team, okay, it's gonna look like this. Yeah, but there's nobody else you're gonna put in this situation. You give him a horrible team, and he'll still pull off a win like he did against the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean it was mainly the defense, but. You know, they still won the game against the Chiefs. I mean, the Chiefs, they started out great, and then they've been through a slump ever since. But he still got the win. I was a little upset that they got the win because I figured we just lose for the rest of the year and get the number one overall pick. Yeah. But he still managed to beat the Chiefs. Listen, all right, it's, it's blatant disrespect. It's time for McAdoo to go. You disrespecting Eli. This man brought championships to this city. And, again, it's not like he's playing horrible. I could understand if he's, Eli's if he's throwing hard, four interceptions a game. Yeah, you know he's then over you know there what? turning the right. ball over. Like he's throwing the ball. He's getting rid of it because he doesn't have anyone open or he doesn't have yeah, time. He doesn't have time. He's throwing it to his receivers. They're dropping it. He's handing it off to his running back to give him so you know to try to do a play play action and sell the pass. The running game. If you have no running game, even if you have a good passing game, yeah. it makes it harder. So the running game is going. He's got nothing to work with. Yeah, who, 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 he's got who his tight end, and that's in, about it. And, Evan Ingram in this situation, and even Ingram and do drops better. Who's more. who's what quarterback is coming into this situation where the Giants have no line, no running game, no receivers, and no defense? You could put Aaron Rodgers in the beginning of the season healthy. Maybe they win one or two more games than they did this yeah. year. Maybe, maybe, and that's not and that's even, not even guaranteed, guaranteed. Exactly with what you know, it, with what they have. It, it's ridiculous. I'm starting the. Uh, Fire Ben McAdoo campaign hashtag uh, get McAdoo out of there. Something we got to think of. What, we got to come up with a what, catchy uh, slogan what, to get McAdoo out of there. I'll, I'll think of one probably by the end of the episode. Um, <laughs> but but when, Matt, when McAdoo came on board, Tom Coughlin was screwed too, and a lot of the fans were like, "You don't do Tom Coughlin like that." And I kind of understood it because he was the offensive coordinator. Eli Manning was looked like the offense was kind of uh, doing well. The defense was the problem yeah. at the time. And, you know, there, McAdoo was looking to go to the Eagles. And in order to prevent him from going to the Eagles, since he had the chemistry with Eli and Tom Coughlin was up there in age, they decided to screw Tom Coughlin yeah. and, and go with McAdoo. But, you know, and that's bad, but it's somewhat understandable. I still felt like Tom Coughlin deserved better than that, yeah. but this this is just unexcusable. Like, you know, it's it's really unexcusable. It's unforgivable for me as a Giants fan. Man. Geno Smith could go undefeated next year, even though he won't. Well, but he won't. Even, even even if he went undefeated now, next year, I still I I'm, my win- my winless. heart with the Giants that's, right that's now. That's actually more likely with Geno Smith that he'll go winless. Oh yeah. <laughs> than, than, than well, anything else. But I'm just saying, like, you know, you could win games going for the rest of the season. You could win games next year. The way you did, one of my favorite players of all time, is just I I can't, you know, I can't do it with the Giants. Yeah, but on the bright side of football, the owners have uh, proposed a little... uh, Emma, I need another drink after that. (laughs) Donation. You have one ready for me, please? The, the, The NFL owners are proposing a $100 million donation to... uh. 
charities, I guess, of the African American and minority players in the NFL. Um, so they're they're actually mulling it over right now. They're, they're discussing it back and forth with the players, which I you know I commend the NFL on you know for for actually trying to do something. Yeah, you know you can't always thank you, Ammo. You can't always you know shout just throw, out to Ammo for making shout the out drinks. to Ammo. You can't always just throw money at the, at the problem, but the, the NFL is. <laughs> <laughs> the NFL is actually trying right now, so you know we got to see where this thing is going to play out. Uh, Kaepernick still does not have a job yet, so there's still, still some other issues that need to be worked out. But I will commend the NFL for trying, um, you know, because at the, at the end of the day, you know, it's not the owners that are, you know, well I can't say it's not. I don't know what's going on in everybody's personal lives, but, yeah, but we're talking about you know police brutality and whatnot. It's not the owners that are out there. You know, in, in, in police uniforms, harassing, you know, African-Americans, minorities in, in general. Or doing you know, anything as far as racial slurs yeah, or anything like that. It's, exa- you know, the exactly. owners didn't really do anything you wrong. Know, it just you know, happened the, to... The Texans owner did make that uh, comment a, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. But, but I, that I, was after the, yeah. after everything started. Yeah, exactly. But I was outside of that, you know, so I do... You know, they, they're not I'm personally s- responsible. I'm sure some of them are on. racist on the low, but, yeah. you know... Yeah, I mean, you see what happened with uh with the Clippers owner a couple of years ago. Yeah. So they might, they might be, but... As far as actually being out in the public and, and, and whatnot and open with it, you know, they, they they haven't been. So I do commend them for trying. I mean, listen, $100 million is a lot of money, and that can do a lot of good, you know, especially when you, you know, when you look at these uh, schools, when you got, I mean, I remember being in school, you know, and I went to, uh, you know, junior high school 117 up in, up the block from here, not too far up, and we were, we were using textbooks that was like from the from the the 70s, late 70s, wow. in some classes. We had some real old textbooks, you know. So you know, as far as education were goes, were your history textbook from the 70s? Nah, it was. What was I think then you just <laughs> missed the quite some. Quite yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I think we had we had we had little up to date history books, but uh, they had some. Yeah, they had some old stuff, you know. So I think that you know that money could definitely be used. You know, to to do a lot of good. Hundred million dollars is a lot of good. I mean, there's a lot that uh you know that that needs work and a lot of areas that need help. But you know what? It, it can't just be the NFL. You know, but they are actually trying to do their part. So hundred million dollars that can go a long way, uh, spread out. You know, across the country, and then maybe if we can actually get the N- NBA, MLB, uh, you know, hockey, you know, to 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 kind of piggyback off of that. You know, because I mean, these we talking about billion dollar organizations. I mean, especially baseball. You know, they definitely got the got the money in baseball. So I like what the NFL did. I gotta commend them on that. You know, I'm still a little bit upset about what's going on with Kaepernick, and we're gonna see how this whole thing plays out. Now that uh, you know, they they've been subpoenaing the phone records and email uh, records and, and whatnot of, of certain NFL owners. So we still gotta wait and see. But at least the league is trying to do something. Even Kaepernick's better than Geno Smith. Cap, listen, Kaepernick is better. I mean, come on now. Don't even disrespect Kaepernick. Let put him in the same breath as Geno Smith. I said Smith. he's better. Geno like, Smith is horrible, okay? I don't even understand this one. I mean, you, I, I got to do the throwback meme out there about the live <laughs> interview with Geno Smith. I don't know if you remember that one, but I'll put that up there later on my Instagram, yeah. at statman underscore scavage. But back to the, uh, you know, the the hundred million that that is a lot of money and it can make a lot of difference in you know different individuals' lives. So it's a good thing that that's that's something that they're and it's not just a hundred million dollars to X cause or whatever. It's what the the players uh, you know causes yeah. that the players care about. And you see you know a lot of players in the league doing a lot of things for charity, including Eli Manning, who's the Walter Payton Man of the Year. <laughs> and you go and screw the man the very next year. This is, I mean, <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know what to say anymore. I mean, you Stan can't, you in. just got to, I mean, like, at some point when everything's going bad, you just got to laugh about it, I yeah. guess. Um, that's all you can do sometimes. It's horrible. And you know what would, what, what would be the ideal situation? Mm-hmm. The same thing, you know, the same situation that happened in, in Buffalo a couple of weeks ago where the Bills decided to bench Tyrod Taylor mm-hmm. for an unproven, relatively unknown quarterback. Oh, he's we see something in him. This is going to be good. And he goes out and throws five interceptions in the first yeah. half of the game. I would love to see that happen this Sunday. 
Yeah. <laughs> the Gino come out. And, and then when throw. he asked Eli to come go in, he's like, no, nah, I'm nah, good. I'm good. My like, ankles bother me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, got it. Leave it to the young kids. Leave it to the young guy. Let's, that would I, that would be poetry in motion if that. I, I won't even love. watch it, though. No, I, I'm can't gonna, even, no. I can't even watch it. All right, well, at least we'll check the stats. I, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll watch the right. first couple of minutes to, to see if they came to their senses and last and minute decided yeah. to let Eli play. And then after that, I will not watch another Giants game. I will look at the stats, the After highlights. the third pick, I'll call you, though, and tell you, look, turn it back on, it's three picks. <laughs> so you can at least have something yeah, but even, even, Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's all, all we got, man. You know, it, 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 listen, it, it's rough. It, it sucks. But, you know, we're we going to have to wait and see, man, how this whole thing plays out. But, you know, shout out to Eli, man. That's a two-time Super Bowl champion, man. Listen, he bought a he bought a ring to he bought two rings to this city, man. He deserves better than that. Well, it's not easy to do, like you know, in football, like or Listen, in any sport, really. Yeah, teams, but teams don't even make it to the Super Bowl. Yep. And we know a lot of teams don't even get rings. There's several <laughs> yep. teams that don't get rings, <laughs> and I hear the whispers in the background and people laughing. But there's teams that don't have rings in the history of the Zero. franchise. You know, and he's, he's got two. Just in several his teams. He's, alone. he's got more than franchises as a whole do. Several franchises Several put together. Put together. There's about like take for example the Green Garbage, like the the Jets and the Eagles. The Jets you, have one. The Eagles have zero. So if you combine, you combine them, all the decades that they've been playing, yeah, and Eli Manning has more than both. of You them. could throw in the Jaguars uh, up 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 in there too. Yeah. If, if you want to, you know, add them, you could throw them up in there because they, you know, that that that's three teams right there. There's a couple more teams we could go down the list, but there's a lot of guys that you know. That don't do what Eli does and haven't accomplished what Eli's accomplished, and it, it's just it, it's unbelievable how they do my my main man Eli Manning. You know what? But again, I'm starting. We got to come up, but by the end of the show, we got to come up with the hashtag to get uh, Ben Mackey do out out of the out of the the, the coach's uh, box. Uh, maybe bump Mac, bump Ben. Uh, but I don't know. Move McAdoo. Hashtag move McAdoo. Something like that. We got. We got. We got to figure something out to get McAdoo up out of here. I, I, I'm a. I'm gonna be tweeting this all week because this is unbelievable. What's going on? But uh, stat man, while we while we are talking New York sports, you know, wouldn't be right. You want to stick on football or you want to go to? New I don't York even want to talk football no oh, more. Okay. I'm, done, I'm right. done with football. I'm done with football at this all point. Right. I'm, I'm done with football until Eli's uh, working and I've on the streak again. I, 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 well, I mean, come on. <laughs> Working on the, he's the, the streak ain't possible now. <laughs> no, unless he plays he till he's like If he doesn't 50. start on Sunday, it's over. It's over with. If he doesn't start this Sunday. I mean, but the NFL as a whole, between you know, the protests, the dramas that are going on, the injuries to so many yeah. you know, key players, not just on the Giants with Odell, but even Aaron Rodgers and just mm. around the league, it's just... It's just not as exciting. Like yeah. th this season just really sucks. No, listen. And I re I look forward to to football more than any other sport, and mm. it, it's the shortest season out of all the sports, time wise and everything, and and game wise, and it's still my favorite or was until recently. <laughs> and it's like you know what? All right. So, so two days ago. Basically, so you wanted to say something stupid about the Knicks. First of all, <laughs> listen, Statman, come on, man. I mean, you were talking New York sports. You were definitely segueing to the Knicks. I so could have been talking about Aaron Judge had the surgery and things as he's a moving yeah. on phase. You don't know what I was going to say, Statman. But I'm you know what? Sure. Statman, you, you brought up the Knicks. Yeah, yeah I you brought, brought them up. You, you brought up the Knicks. Uh, you know, and, I, and I, we go through this every year, Statman. As soon as you say something about King James, it's usually downhill for the Knicks from that point on. They have been losing as of late. Shout out to my guy, Ennis Cantor. That's my guy right there. He's actually still balling. But the Knicks as a whole have been losing. Now, Statman, did you think after the, the, the start that the Knicks had, did you think it was going to start to fall so fast? Or what was your mindset going into this thing? And you said no. the Knicks look decent right now. They, they You said they beat Cavs. And whatnot, and then they just start losing again. Do you think they'll make the playoffs? No, but they lost to no, the. No, no, Cavs, but do you think they'll? No, that's not my know, question. My question is, but do you think they'll make the playoffs? I do. You, 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 well, you know what? You're 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 you are a Knicks fan. Well, the th the thing is, you know, they people all teams go through slumps. The Cavs went through a slump. Like you know, they're playing well now. Well, like, that's that's not that's well, not, not all teams. Let's not compare you know, them to the Cavs because. But the Cavs I, I'm just saying, teams teams team. teams go up and down. With their okay. streaks. Right now, and the, right now they're in a right slump. Now. Ninth. Ninth right now, right? 
Yeah. Okay. So, so, want, so I, I, so you think, I didn't, I didn't think like they were in the like five seed before the fourth seed or whatever, but that was so early in the season. I, I wouldn't think that they could carry that all the way through. But so let me think, let me let me say. This. So, so do you think they're gonna make the playoffs? What seed do you think they're gonna be in? Between six and eighth. Between six and that's six is kind of hot for those guys right now. I mean, six is the best case scenario. I don't see them. Okay. I don't see them going five or four. Like now. you know, more than likely eighth, seventh. You know, but possibly I wouldn't be completely shocked if they were sixth. If they were fifth, I would be shocked. Okay, so now let me let me ask you this next question, Stat Man. Because I because I, I mean because right now they're playing horrible basketball. Would you would you not agree with that? Would you agree with that they're playing the, horrible the basketball? The recent games, right now? the most recent games. The, yeah. Okay, they've been playing horrible basketball. You say six to eighth seed in the playoffs. Does that do you, does that mean you think they're going to make it out of the first round, or they just get swept out of the first round, or or what? Or or what? Or do, or do or is this the year that the Knicks get to get back to the promised land? It depends on who they play and the, and the matchups. So, so, like, so, you, so you're going to sit there and tell me the Knicks have a chance to make it back to the promised land this year? No. Oh, okay. All right. So I just want to be clear on that. So unless there's some some okay. crazy trades going on before the trade. Okay. Deadline. So so basically like, they're not going to do anything this year. They just because they're horrible right now. I just wanted to get that get that out the way. They might but, make the bottom but, of but, the. But on another note. Why, you know, while we're talking about the, the bottom, let's talk about the top now because because since you made that comment about the Cavs, they actually they've been streaking. I think it's about eight, nine games now in a row they've won. Uh, your, Which your, comment are you referring your to? Favorite, your favorite player, King James, LeBron James, the man you love to hate but really have a deep down respect and love for King James. He's been on a tear, playing like an MVP. You know, he, he did. I know, you, I know you smiled a little bit when he got ejected for the first time in his career uh, the other night. But they have been balling. I just want to know. What, I, I'm just wondering what statement you were referring to. I'm that referring to every statement, statement right now. And then all of a sudden it went downhill from every, there. Every, because you, you spoke about the Cavs and you tried to, you know, you, you came at me in regards to the Cavs losing to the Knicks and, and, and whatnot. And since then, they've been streaking. And the, and the, all and right, and the two still, teams have been going in opposite directions. They're still just, like, tied for third place with Toronto, but, you know, for a team that's... But they're actually, but they're, but they're winning basketball games, right? That's true. Oh, okay, but... but the Cavs will, will 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 more than likely be back in the the, the finals again this year. When, when, when's the next time the Knicks are going to be in the finals? You you guys are three no, 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 you guys are next, three games ahead of the Knicks. When is the, when you is know the, it's when not is, like when is the next time that the Knicks will be in the finals? That's my next question. When is that man? Can you tell me that when? Crickets, crickets. Anybody? Crickets, crickets. Within the next five years. Hey, you might want to uh, make his next drink a double. <laughs> Please, if you if you could, because I know I know this is rough for Stat Man when the Knicks start losing ammo. So make his next drink a double, all right? And um, we, we're not gonna be back in the promise anytime soon, Stat Man. I'm sorry, it's, it's just it's over for that. It was when you of, say we, that means your team, the Cavs. I know that, you, you know. know. No, so. no, no, no. I know where, where the Cavs are gonna be. They're gonna be right back in the finals, and they're actually gonna they're gonna make a move that you're gonna you're gonna really hate. Before this trade deadline, they're gonna make a move that you're gonna really hate, and you're gonna really hate on LeBron James after they make this move. And bring in my main man, DeMarcus Cousins. Well, that's the fan mail question from Richard from Trenton, New Jersey, <laughs> who wrote in, which big man do you guys think the Cavs will wind up making a play for? DeAndre Jordan, Marcus Saul, or DeMarcus Cousins? DeMarcus Cousins was rumored since the beginning of the season that they were looking to get him. Mm -hmm. He's obviously the better player out of the three. Uh, he's younger than Marcus Saul. He's more talented than DeAndre Jordan and... You know, either one of those three guys would be, you know, depending on what they give up, yeah, well, uh, an upgrade because the center position is their their weakest link. Because if they put, you know, Tristan Thompson is a decent player. If Kevin Love's plays center, he's a defensive liability. Mm -hmm. You know, he's meant to be the a stretch four. Yeah. And well, let me break it down. What's it? Let me shout, shout out to shout out to the to the, to the fan. Who's that, Richard? Yeah, yeah. from uh, Trenton, New Jersey. Shout out to Jersey, man. They 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 love us out in Jersey. Uh, let me let me break this thing down for you, Richard. Out of the three big men, um, Cousins, Gasol, and uh, DeAndre Jordan, we know right now. I mean, the Clippers are pretty much they're selling right now. They Blake is out. Uh, Patrick Beverly is out for the season, so we know they're not going to be doing much. And they've already uh, been talking about moving DeAndre Jordan. Um, any one of these three guys will be will be good and, and definitely an upgrade because I, I mean Tristan Thompson is, is like a DeAndre Jordan light, you know, so that he he would definitely be an upgrade. But if we're if we're looking at 
finals matchups between Golden State, and I got to break down the three. If if the Cavs have DeMarcus Cousins, I think they have the edge over Golden State. Marc Gasol, I think it's it's a 50-50 chance. And, if, uh, and with DeAndre Jordan, I would still give the edge to Golden State in the seven-game series. Um, but again, you know, with uh, Memphis, Mike Conley is pretty much done for the season. They just lost eight games in a row. They just fired their coach. Mark Gasol's kind of been upset. He got benched in that last game. Yeah, this, so uh, here's another one for you. It's Trey. definitely likely that, uh, you know, Mark Gasol would be, would be the move. I would like to have DeMarcus Cousins because, again, like I said, he's yeah, the I mean, guy that if they bring in. He's clearly the better player out of the three, and yeah. he's also significantly younger than Marcus Gasol. Yeah. What did you think about that benching for Marcus Gasol? He seemed a little he he seemed a little upset about it, but he wasn't he wasn't yeah. like going out there and just being irate about it. He's like, obviously, well, he's not that. I'm going to be. He's, yeah. yeah, he's not. That's that's not his his. Uh, he's not that type of player. So I didn't think you know, but he definitely voiced his opinion on it. I mean, it's 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 rough, but I mean, you. I mean, it's it's kind of like you know. So we just we just saw this. I mean, Eli's a two-time champion, and, and he's getting benched right now. So it's kind of rough. The team is losing. Maybe they felt like they needed to do something different. Did the coach know. get fired after that? Yeah, he, uh, yeah, yeah he, got, he got he got fired. So and then wasn't it just the last year? He was like everyone's favorite coach. You know. Yeah. Listen. I, I mean, it's it's at the end of the day, it's rough as business, but he's out of there. I mean, what really happened was, the, like, we were there at a Nets game or whatever, and the mm -hmm. you know the the team was coming back with their their guys or whatever, the bench guys, and they left them in because they came yeah. and they got the streak or whatever. I mean, it's you know? it's it's, it's, you, it's one you game. Stayed with, you stay with the bench, and then you know, I, I you know then. Eventually, yeah. I mean, they stay with the bench, and they ended up losing. But you went with the guys who, apparently, into it. yeah, because they had the chemistry. They were, they were. If you're playing team basketball, you're passing, you're making, you're hustling, you're getting steals. Why would you take guys that are just, you know, yeah. for the last minute of the game, somebody who's been sitting, or the last two minutes, somebody who's sitting and is cold? You're gonna put them in instead of the guys who are fired up. And playing hard, like I mean, I get the yeah. mentality, but Marcus is their best player, so yeah, he definitely is. Listen, that's why I say, you know, it, you know, it, going back to the fan mail question, Marcus Hall is great defensive center. He's good on the offensive end, and he's probably former defensive player. Of yeah, the year. he's probably one of the, the best, if not the best, passing big man in the game. So you know, I'd love to have him on the Cavs as well. My pick, though, if I had to pick between, I would definitely pick Cousins, though. But I mean, that's all contingent on how New Orleans does, because right now they're in, I believe, seventh place in the West. So if they're in, the, if they're in, the, in, in, in the hunt and the thick of things, I think it's a little less likely that the team tries to 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 trade uh, yeah. Marcus Cousins. And it's it's also going to be literally, uh, you know. It's going to happen within weeks of the trade deadline, so yeah, everyone exactly. sees how they're doing at that point. Now, the only one I will say, I feel like DeAndre Jordan may get moved a little sooner than the other two just because they're actually openly shopping uh, DeAndre Jordan right now. The Clippers are yeah. openly shopping him. So he may move a little bit uh, you know, sooner than the other two, but I think as far as Cousins and Gasol, it's really going to be determined by the trade deadline, especially with New Orleans, whether or not they move him because they're going to want to get something for him. And again, you know, the Nets do have, have um, excuse me, the Cavs do have that Nets pick, which is going to be tempting for a lot of teams, and they also have their first-round pick, so they can definitely maneuver. But uh, we got to wait and see. But, you know, we, the Cavs have been known for making moves, Come trade deadline, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm with it, whichever way you know, I'm with it. whatever, whatever, whatever helps them get back to that to that championship and beat the Golden State Warriors this season. I'm with it. All right, and uh, now Eric Sanchez had the famous saying, "Lose for Lonzo for the okay. Knicks." He did for them <laughs> losing. And now the, I don't know the, if that if that was the, the right move. I'm glad, kind of glad the, they didn't. The Lakers <laughs> are losing with Lonzo, so so they got to lose with Lonzo. We, you know, they we're, were trying to lose, try for, to lose Lonzo. for Lonzo. They're losing, they're with, losing Lonzo. with Lonzo. Yeah. But on the bright side, Lavar still thinks that Lonzo is better than Steph Curry, even after last night's uh, overtime oh, loss. Oh yeah. To the State Warriors. Somebody needs to check that man's head out. I mean, he did actually. Lonzo did actually have a good game yesterday. 
It was like 15 and 15 or something like that. Yeah, those are Steph Curry numbers for sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, I, you know, I don't know, man. Lonzo is having a rough season. I, I, don't, I just think it was too much pressure put on him by his father. And yeah, he has, 100%. Like, if he, he just played his game and he was left alone. But, I mean, the, his dad made so much money off of him, like, as it is. You know, yeah. but I mean, he he, he could have probably made a lot more and in the long term if he just let his kid play his game and not put the you know the target on his back. Like yeah, well, listen. One thing we know he has to do is fix that shooting for him. It's horrible. I don't. It's like kind of like a like one of these kind of. I don't. I, I I don't know. But other than that, I mean, he rebounds the ball really well. He uh, you know, he's a good, really good passer. But yeah, he, there's, there's no taking away his passing. Yeah, like, but it's you know. just, but everything else, you know, I mean, it's just horrible. It's just, it's just, outside of that, the shooting is just horrible. So it's it's, it's rough. But I just again, well, I just the think thing. if you're like a Magic Johnson or a John Stockton, they could pass really well. But you know, another reason for that is you also have to worry about when they drive in that shot. Yeah. If all you got is a pass, like, and you don't have to worry about the three pointer with Stockton or whatever. You That's don't got to worry about magic with the driving in, making layups or you know, or difficult mid range shots or whatever. Yeah. You're, it's the defense is a whole different animal. Yeah. So. and I mean, it, it, it's not like you know he has a great team, you know, either. You know, I mean, it's a lot. It's a very young team. I mean, you got Brooke Lopez, who's a seasoned veteran, and actually, you know, Brandon Ingram is is starting to come into his own. But outside of that, they they really don't have a, a good team. So you know, now it's just going to look a little bit worse. But um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cut that we're gonna cut the, the basketball talk short for a minute because we gotta take a moment we gotta shout out Soundview because they definitely you know hold us down making sure the ball is stocked up and uh, when we come back we're gonna bring out our, our guest for uh for for today we got I told you we got some surprises for y'all man so yeah y'all let us know when y'all ready in the booth but uh make sure y'all following us on the web realfansrealtalk.com facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk, and uh, subscribe to that YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash For The Fans Productions. It's going down, but uh, we ready to rock and roll, fellas. Let's do it. Hey, it's your girl Bianca Bonnie from Love and Hip Hop New York. You already know I'm rocking with Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk dot com. Where Arthur Diamond, Trip Young, and Intern Tom for the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if hey, how you doing? This is Sound Liquors. This year we're raffling off a three liter bottle of Bel Air Rose. Come on in and get your dollar raffle ticket. Have a happy New Year's. FansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamonds tripped young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan Yeah, Uncle Ralph, you already know what it is You know what you're doing Video Music Box, I'm here Real fans, real talk And that's the way it's going down Don't go nowhere Fix your face They ain't going nowhere Ha! RealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamonds trip young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan What's going on everyone? This is Legend of Two Games Reverend for Real Fans Real Talk I had to come check my people over there at Sound of Liquors, man You should do the same Passion Tequila is the flavor of the month Come through, drop the Real Fans Real Talk man. You get a discount on it, man Make sure you're tuning in every Thursday night when you come through, tell them Legend of Two Games sent you. Where Arthur Diamonds trip young and intern Tom for the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. All right, welcome back. Shout out to Sambu Lickers again. Don't forget, if y'all if y'all use that uh, Real Fans Real Talk promo code, you get a discount on that's that new uh, Cameron Tequila, that that uh, Passion Tequila, that's that Pink Tequila. So shout out to Sambu Lickers. They up in the Bronx. So holla at them. They make sure the boss stays tight. But uh, with that being said, we got a very special guest that's going to rock out with us for the rest of the show. Mr. Raw Deal, the last big night himself. Gene Dill, what's going on? Welcome. Appreciate you for coming. Finally, got you to sit down with us in the man cave and chop it up. What's up, man? Flash, nothing much, man. 
Now I'm gonna go because I know we're gonna talk about the documentary, but I got to go back because so me, me and Gene, we got a personal relationship, so we know each other. So I know stuff that that y'all probably don't know, but a lot of people might not know this. But back in the day, Gene used to have a little game. He used to have a little ball game. All right, a, a little ball a game. Little, I didn't want to say I don't want to. I didn't want to yeah. just blow up the spot at all at once. Yeah. You know, okay. but he 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 did he did play uh, Tennessee Chattanooga yes, with uh with Jerry Wilkins. Correct. All right, could have could have made it to the league if it wasn't for a couple of injuries. Right, but you definitely you led the state in well, rebounding. I led the state of Missouri coming out of high school in rebounding. Okay, uh, I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, so that's why I played ball a lot. And then uh, I did some JUCO out there. And then I went to the University of Tennessee Chattanooga, where uh, um, we won two Southern Conference championships. Gerald was. Um, one of the players of many who came out of Chattanooga who made it to the league. Uh, my senior year, uh, we brought a new coach in. And, when, you know, when you bring a new coach in, he want to bring new players in. Mm -hmm. But he had to play play me because those players had, you know, flunked out. <laughs> 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 so, but still in all, uh, uh, I still hold the, I think I still probably still hold the title and field goal percentage at the UT Chattanooga. Okay. You know, I did pretty good. But... Um, my thing was is that I wanted to get my degree and, and go on anyway if I didn't make it overseas or the league or whatever. Okay. Yeah. And then, but from that, so we're going to fast forward because it's a little late in the program. We're going to fast forward, though. You want, you found yourself in New York right in the mix of things. And uh, and we're going to speak. Gonna fast forward a little bit, working with Puff. Right. Head of Bad Boy Security. Uh, I was part of Bad Boy Security. Okay. Everybody had to see what happens is that uh, at the time, a lot of people had their own, co certain dudes had their own contract with Puff. Mm -hmm. Me, I had my own contract. Wolf had his own contract. Paul had his own contract. And Paul, uh, who used to hire out other security for Puff like that. Okay. But us three, we used to run the security. Like, Wolf couldn't tell me what to do, or Paul couldn't tell me what to do. I couldn't tell Wolf or Paul what to do. You know, we all had our separate functions. When I had Puff for the day, I had Puff my days. They had Puff day days. It was like that. Okay. So, Raw deal the last big night. It Said that. It took over. Huh? It blew up all over the internet, and they then had you come to Fox, do some stuff with Ice-T. You had a write-up in Double XL magazine. Um, you, the internet went crazy. On a and &E tonight, actually. Tonight on, tonight on a and &E. &E. They got right. something that, 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 that you've been featured in, featured in as well. The Tupac it's thing. The Tupac thing is tonight. Right. All right. I'm in that. All right. So so why? Why though? Why, why Roy Dill the last big night? Why what? You know. Um, why did you decide to do it? Well, I didn't actually decide to do it. Uh, first, Miss Wallace came to me with the new Nick Bloomfield thing, mm -hmm. and that's after her son had died, and she was trying to get some not only clarity, she wanted to get the truth out, you know. As you know yourself, Anthony, uh, Puff had told her that he didn't know me, yeah, because the FBI, everybody, the LAPD, everybody was saying Gene Deal, Gene Deal gave us the insight of what was going on. And when she went to him, she said she didn't know him. But actually, one of my fraternity brothers, who actually was the bodyguard of Michael Jackson uh, when he had his demise, uh, called me up and said, yo, Gene, Miss Wallace want to know you. She want to meet you. I met her. And then she eventually asked me to do the Nick Bloomfield thing so she can get some uh, uh, understanding and she can get down to who actually killed her son. And I did that. And then people started coming to me for documentary deals, book deals. Had a book deal with Simon & Schuster. Had a documentary deal um, with Ricardo McKendricks Jr. Um, and this was back in early 2000s and things like that. So it, 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 the information was getting out. I did the MTV. I did the VH1. So when I decided to do it was... Now is because nobody got the real information. They was getting bits and pieces mm -hmm. of what the producers at that time wanted to tell the story. You know, people were shying away with, 
okay, this may be legal and Puff may do this and Puff may do that because Puff got a lot of Ciroc m money, but this ain't Ciroc, right? Nah, no. it's not. Nah, okay. We ain't playing that on the side of town. Oh, right, well, what's this nah. right here? I can't even say we can't even say what it we is. Got it. Uh, it, what it is. It, is, it, is it came from though. Soundview, right? Yeah, it came from Soundview. Yeah. That's all. It's we good. Can say. It's good though. It came it's from good, Soundview. Right. That's it. So you know, um, we got a lot of that kind of money. So you, that's why you don't see me on none, no New York radio, no New York, you know, TV. You know, Fox came and got me. Big networks, A and E. Yeah. You understand? A and E, Fox. They coming to get me asking these questions. You understand? And you got these, you got right here at home, in-house, you know, and they, they shine them. away from it. So I decided to get my truth out myself. I, I, you, you know, at, no, we use our own money, our own time, our own space. We did that ourselves. You understand? So we can get it out so people will know. So when they start asking the questions, when Puff get on television, he say to you, he tell everybody, oh, I didn't know nothing was going on. We we dispute that because yeah. Wolf told you, I told you, and you got it all over the newspaper. So how are you gonna sit up and say that you didn't know nothing was going on? Yeah. You understand? So I want to get the truth out. So then the 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 regular people, everyday people, the everyday fans, when they get in there, and they start questioning and they, and they really want to know. They have something to reference to. How's your how's your relationship with Miss Wallace uh, currently? I haven't seen Miss Wallace or talked to her in years. You understand? I, I'm not, I'm not, a, you know, you know, I'm not a fan to you know like anybody. Whereas like I'm running to check on her. I check on Wolf Mother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, I'm cool with her. You know, uh, I didn't know Miss Wallace. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. You know, she wanted to know me and. I went to her, I told her everything about her son, what happened that night, and what went down, and that was it. So we really didn't have a relationship like that, but if she called up on me again, whenever she called up on me, you know, when I had to do a deposition uh, against the LAPD, I did it. You know what I'm saying? I have no problem with that. Well, um, what's your thoughts? Because, you know, we see, well, like we saw um, Big Big's daughter not too long ago when Puff started the whole reunion tour. And uh, she came out and went on Twitter and was just talking all of this, you know, about him not licking out and taking care of. But it seems like that happens a lot with Puff not taking care of, of people that's no longer here that helped him to get to where he's at. See, that's what the people don't understand. Yo, it's people like me, Tone, Wolf. Ock, uh, Paul, and we help Puff get to those spots and those places and be safe in those places and everything like that so he could build his brand. You know, it was through, you know, people don't understand back in New York in the, in the mid 90s and 2000, you had the, the, the top drug dealers, you had the top people out here that would have thought you would do things to you if you wasn't strong and if you if you couldn't hold your team down. We had a strong enough team that we held him down to be able to do what he had to do to be the places to build his brand. And then a lot of us guys, you know, he like he did a lot of people mother them went to the wayside once he became a billionaire millionaire. Now, I know a lot of people remember where they were when they found out the news that Big died. You know, I was on my way to school, just heard it on the radio or whatever. Um, but you were actually there. And what was that like as far as, you know, being there and how did it affect you afterwards? I remember you had the line in there. The censored version is, there's no need to call an ambulance. That man is dead. But, you know, um, what, what was that like as far as, you know, af the after effects of everything that happened? How did that affect you? Well... I was I was truly affected for that when it's like you being at war and you got your whole team and you want everybody you want you want all the soldiers to come home and when one don't come home and you knew or you 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 pretty much knew something was going to go down and you had all the intel you know you try to dot all the I's, cross all the T's, and that individual don't make it, 
you feel a, 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 a loss within yourself. You feel a hurt. You feel a pain that nobody, I mean nobody. Like when I hear Big's music, when I see, you know, things about him, you know, articles or stuff like that, you don't know the pain because I had a conversation with this man. You know, I, I, I talked to this man, you know, and I try to tell this man that it, 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 it's, it's going to be one of us. You understand? And it's like when it's one of the greatest rappers of all time and you feel that God put you in a place to save somebody. And I wasn't, you know, and, and this is what people don't understand. I was never Big's bodyguard. I was Puff bodyguard. So when you look at the check mark, you understand, I get an A plus because I saved his life. You understand? But inside myself, way before any of this stuff went down, I saved the wrong person's life. You understand? Because sure. when you put your life down to save a friend or a next man or a co-worker or, or, or just a stranger, anybody, somebody shows appreciation and gratification for that. Today, he has yet even said thank you. You know, I know, you know, Big lost his life, and that's thanks that's a shame. Back. He didn't, he didn't but that. thanks for having my back, Gene. Or even ask me, how did you know to run the light, Gene? Why did you say run the light? You understand? So, to get back to your question at hand, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's been difficult for me. You understand? And it started that night and it hasn't ended yet. You know, I had a conversation with his on, mother. I'm sure it's still, huh? the music still comes on. I'm sure it still triggers memories. Like it, it's, 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 it's terrible, man. It, it's played a crazy part of my life. You understand? And then by, it's hard, you know, you got to understand. I'm not the dude that for years, you know, I know a lot of people in the industry, music industry. I know a lot of people in the streets. For me to come out like this and, you know, stand against the World Trade Center, I mean, I mean the Empire State Building, you understand? Yeah. It, it, it's difficult, you know. Well, that's like what you said, the, the major networks won't touch it because they know that they don't want to deal with the lawsuits and that puffy lawsuit money and everything, so it's hard to go up against, you know. When you're trying to tell the truth, what you were saying before and everything. You don't get no kudos for telling the truth. No. You understand? You don't, you, ain't nobody running me down, giving me no deals or putting money in my pocket. Yo, how much you spend, put money back in my pocket or nothing like that. None of that. You know, some guys, you know, yo, man, yo, guy's a snitch. That guy's this, that, and that. Get out of here, man. You understand? No. Listen, it is what it is. We're going to, um... We we're gonna we gonna we're gonna keep Gene here. We're gonna go on the overtime with Gene. We're gonna wrap up the live show. But we we still we ain't even scratched the surface yet. So we're gonna keep Gene here for a little overtime, sir, because I know y'all got y'all y'all wanna see it and talk to Gene a lot more. So we're gonna just uh wrap the live show up and then, you know, a little bit a couple of weeks from now we'll let you guys see the the bonus uh footage with, with Gene Dale. So really quick for myself, Trip Young, Mark the Statman, Skevage, Ammo, love you back there. And Big Gene, we will see you guys back next week. Make sure you guys pull up to the Barclays Center December 17th. Get your tickets now. Um, the finals for the NBA 2K tournament is going down December 17th, 4 p.m. To, to 6 p.m. And then right after that, you guys can stay for the, the Nets Pacers game. All right. But we will see you guys back next week. Facts, what up, what up? Real fans, realtalk.com.
Where Arthur Diamond tripped young and intern time For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, gossip, all the hot topics Real fans, real talk.com got it They got the hottest bloggers It's Jeremy Linhart We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor Tell them Bobby sent ya From spring to winter Tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son Real fans, real talk.com, I'm out one Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Uh, real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Uh.